All right, so today we're going to talk about the uh, urinary system, uh, which is uh, basically how we make urine, okay? So the urinary systems. It's, uh, some people call it part of your excretory system because it's a way for you to excrete and get rid of things that your body no longer needs, uh, maybe toxins and things like that, extra water, extra sodium. Uh, so things that you want to get rid of from your body, you can do that by using your urinary system. Or one of the ways you could do that is to use your urinary system. So the urinary system uh, has four main portions or main parts. That's the kidneys, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. So your kidneys are these two organs here on either side. They're retroperitoneal, which means they're behind the, peritoneal, uh, the peritoneum. So if you think about all those organs that are inside your abdominal cavity, they're inside a peritoneal cavity, peritoneal sac. Remember the visceral and parietal peritoneum, those membranes? The kidneys are behind that. They're retroperitoneal, so they're not really inside that sac that contains all your digestive organs. So your kidneys are your major excretory organs. Uh, they're the ones that are going to filter the blood. So filter blood. And as a process of filtering that blood, they produce urine. And so urine is the waste product, and it's going to contain various things that we'll talk about later. So once the kidneys filter the blood, that urine is then uh, transported from kidneys to the bladder via the ureters and you have a right and left ureter and they're just tubes that allow for transport of urine from the kidney to the bladder. The bladder is a storage facility. It holds the urine uh, until the bladder is full and it's a socially appropriate time for you to go and then um, allow that urine to exit the body through the urethra. So both the male and female have urethras. So the ureters, bladder, and urethra are just uh, are just basically transport mechanisms. They don't really do anything. All the work of the urinary system is done by the kidneys. The filtration, production of hormones, and things like that. Now one thing that's really important to know about the kidneys is they're very vascular. A lot of blood supply. You have your renal arteries and renal veins. You remember that from your uh, blood vessels. Uh, blood will go into these renal arteries and the kidneys divided up into these lobes. So you can see all these little lobe areas and uh, blood vessels will uh, basically go into each one of these lobes and divide, divide, divide until they form capillaries uh, and then that's where the blood filtration is going to occur. So a lot of blood is going to go through your kidneys at any one time in order to filter it, uh, filter out sodium and uh, water and things like that. And we'll talk about all the things that the kidneys do. Uh, just a quick comparison between the male and the female urinary system. Uh, if you look at number one, not urinary. This is the female over here, okay, and this is the male. Hopefully you guys know that by now. Uh, so this is an ovary, not part of the urinary system. This is the bladder. No, that's the uterus, not part of the urinary system. But number three, here's the bladder in the female, the bladder in the male. So now we have part of the urinary system. Here's the urethra in the female, urethra in the male part of the urinary system. The testis. And the nope, not part of the urinary system. The penis. Not really. I mean, it's uh, basically the urethra just passes through the penis. So, I mean, you could say you, you, the, the penis is, um, contains the urethra. Uh, so, the penis is both for the, the, I guess, the urinary system and the reproductive system. All right. But the true things that are, that are the same between the male and female are they both have a bladder, they both have kidneys, they both have ureters, they both have bladders, they both have urethras. Okay? So what does the kidney do? About a quarter of your cardiac output, so remember what cardiac output is, how much uh, blood your, your heart is, is pumping out, uh, about a fourth of that goes through the kidneys each minute. So they're very vascular, uh, vascular. They're, they're basically filtering out a lot of uh, blood all the time. As that blood goes through the kidneys, you're going to remove toxins, metabolic wastes, excess ions, like think sodium. Uh, and as a matter of if you excess, if you get rid of sodium, what follows sodium? What follows sodium? Water. So if you're getting rid of sodium, you would get rid of water. Well, if you get, if you get rid of water, what does that change? Blood volume. And if blood volume changes, what happens? Blood pressure. So you can see how the kidneys play a really dynamic role in helping you regulate your blood pressure by basically helping you balance your salt and water balance. Uh, they also uh, help you to maintain your chemical composition and the pH of your blood. And we're going to talk about acid-base balance in a couple of uh, lectures. And so you'll see the role of kidneys in acid-base balance. 
Uh, they also have an endocrine function. So if you think about the endocrine system, the hormones that it's made, uh, we've already talked about these uh, in several different uh, times before. We talked about the heart and we talked about blood, uh, blood, um, red blood cells being formed. We know that renin has a role in blood pressure regulation and we know that erythropoietin or EPO is involved in regulating red blood cell production. It's also involved in the activation of vitamin D. Vitamin D is that stuff that has to be, uh, that starts out in your skin, UV light is going to activate it, but the final kind of uh, final processing of the chemical that becomes vitamin D that you need uh, in order to absorb calcium in your small intestine, remember vitamin D helps you absorb calcium, uh, actually takes place in the kidneys. So people with kidney damage or kidney failure are going to have reduced filtration, reduced endocrine function, and can have reduced vitamin D uh, availability. So the kidneys do more than just make urine. So we talked about the gross anatomy of the kidney. We're going to do a kidney lab where we'll really get down and talk about all the different parts of the kidney. We'll talk about um, the, the kind of the individual parts, but this is just going to be the gross anatomy now, just to, so you, when I say terms, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, so if you look at a kidney, uh, remember anytime you have an outside of the kidney or an inside of the kidney or of any organ, the outside is called the cortex. So this outermost, let me go back. So this outermost, we, these little capillaries are, this, this outermost area, kind of all the way around, that's the renal cortex, and all of this stuff in the middle is called the renal medulla. So you can see that in this picture. We have a renal medulla, and then you have the renal cortex. Now, something kind of different about when you say cortex and medulla in the kidney, the medulla is actually these little things called renal pyramids, these little lobes. They're called renal pyramids. And in the kidney, the cortex actually kind of invaginates and divides each lobe from one another. So the cortex is not only around the outside, it also kind of dips in and surrounds and forms those individual lobes or renal pyramids, which we call the renal medulla. The very, very center of the kidney is called the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis is where the urine collects before it travels down the ureter. Okay, so we'll have a renal lab with some big pictures, and I'll go over that again uh, in some of your lab videos. So the other part of the kidney that you have to know is called the nephron. And this is where the term nephrologist goes to. So if you go to a urologist, so a urologist, this is a surgeon. Okay, so a urologist is a surgeon. These are people that do prostate surgeries, uh, urinary surgeries, bladder surgeries. If you have a kidney stone, things like that, need to have some surgical intervention. Uh, that's a urologist, okay? A nephrologist, that's an uh, in, a, um, internist, so it's still an MD, but it's the, the non-surgical doctors. And they are the ones that are going to deal with things like uh, dialysis and people with diabetes and kidney damage and and uh, nephritis and uh, blood, some blood pressure issues. So you have urologists, which are surgeons, and nephrologists, which are internists, okay, non-surgical doctors. So the nephrologists get their name because what they really focus on is the job of the nephron. And so what you see here in kind of yellow is called a nephron, and it's got a bunch of different parts to it. Um, and this is where urine is actually made, okay, so urine going to be uh, basically processed inside the nephron. So what you have is blood flow that goes in to what's called a renal corpuscle. All right, uh, and so it's made up of a glomerular capsule, which is kind of this outermost kind of uh, bag, if you, if you will, this outermost uh, capsule that surrounds an arterial capillary. So you can see this little capillary inside there. That's called the glomerulus. It's actually a capillary. So as blood is going through that capillary, uh, we're going to talk about filtration pressures. Um, basically, the plasma is going to be pushed out into this glomerulus. All right, so the watery portion of the blood is going to be pushed out into this glomerular capsule, and we call that filtrate. And we're going to talk about this again, so um, don't, don't freak out if you're not quite getting it. In this filtrate, so basically it's real similar to, to plasma, the liquid part of blood, is then going to travel through the nephron in this direction until it finally gets to the end and exits out to the renal 
pelvis, where then it can then leave through the ureters and go to the bladder. Well, as the filtrate travels through the nephron, things happen. Things can be secreted, things can be reabsorbed, uh, so you can modify the urine. And so it takes place in different parts of the nephron, and we're going to talk about that, but first we want to name those different parts of the nephron so that you, when I say it, you know what I'm talking about. So the first little squiggly part is called the proximal convoluted tubule because it's closest to the glomerulus. It's proximal. It's clo not, don't think about arms, like prox proximal distal for arms and legs. It just means it's closest to the glomerulus. Okay, so the proximal convoluted, which means it's wiggly, uh, tubule. Then it makes this thing called a loop of Henle, like a hairpin turn. Well, as it's going down, you call it the descending limb. As it's going back up, you call it the ascending limb. So as the filtrate descends the descending limb, then it ascends the ascending limb, then it goes through another twisty part called the distal convoluted tubule. So this is the wiggly part that's far away from the, the glomerulus, so the distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule will then take that filtrate and put it into what's called a collecting duct. And you'll see several distal convoluted tubules will all coalesce into one collecting duct. The uh, filtrate will then uh, be in its final form, which we call urine, and then that will be carried to the ureters uh, so they can be taken to the bladder and stored, and then taken out the body through the urethra. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of times I'm going to say PCT for proximal convoluted tubule and DCT for distal convoluted tubule. So that's kind of the abbreviations that you may see me write a lot. Now, we're not doing a whole lot of histology for this particular unit. I know, I know you're glad because <laughs> everybody loves histology. All right, but what's interesting to know and what you should realize and understand is that the reason that the different parts of the nephron do different things is because they look different. They have different types of, of tissues. And so if you look at uh, the glomerulus all the way down to the uh, collecting ducts, you'll notice that the cell types uh, are different. All right, so uh, they may be very thin. So what would be uh, the importance of having a thin cell layer, kind of like a simple squamous layer? Easy movement of things across it, which is what you want to have when you want to move that plasma from the blood into the, glomer the glomerular, um, uh, into the glomerulus. So you want to have a kind of an, a, a thin layer. Uh, so here you see this thin layer here. Uh, as you're going to be secreting and excreting things uh, throughout the rest of the uh, nephron, you're going to see that the cell layers become thicker. They may have microvilli. They may have um, uh, or no microvilli. Uh, and um, so that's really all we're going to say about that. I just really want you to understand that each part of the nephron has a different look histologically because form follows function, and so the form of the cells kind of gives you an indication of what it's going to do. Okay, so that's really all we're going to say about that uh, right now. All right, so a couple of other things about uh, these nephrons. There's two different types of nephrons. There's what's called a cortical nephron, and there's what's called a juxtamedullary nephron. So remember, in the, in the kidney, if you look at the kidney, the outermost area is the cortex. These what are called renal pyramids make up the medulla. And so in the cortical nephron, these are primarily found around the outside of the kidney. And they have really short loops, excuse me, short loops of Henle, okay? The juxtamedullary nephrons, the glomerulus is still found, we'll draw a little line here, this is cortex. This is medulla. The, the uh, glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, is all in the cortex. It has a really long loop of Henle. All right? And so this, this uh, type of nephron is really used uh, when you're talking about concentrating urine. So when you're able to, if you're dehydrated and you can still make urine, then how do you can retain a lot of fluid in your body without getting rid of all your water? So that's going to happen in the juxtamedullary nephrons. They have long loops of Henle. So maybe what you're noticing is uh, these purple things. And so these are arterial, or um, I guess, uh, sorry, capillary beds. And each nephron has two capillary beds. It's two capillaries kind of in a row, all right? So as blood flows from this uh, renal, or 
um, artery, or basically this is an arterial, it's going to go into this glomerulus. That's the first capillary bed. It goes in and then it comes back out. In the cortical nephron, it comes out and it forms a second capillary bed all around the distal and convoluted tubules. Then it collects and goes back into the renal venule and then goes to these renal veins, uh, eventually back to the inferior uh, vena cava. In the juxtamedullary nephrons, the blood goes into the glomerulus, the first capillary bed. Then it leaves and then it goes and follows the loop of Henle. And it forms something called the vasa recta, which basically means straight vessel. It looks kind of like a ladder and it surrounds the ascending and descending loop as the second capillary bed. Then that blood's going to return back into the venous system. So you have two um, uh, arterial capillaries in a row. So it's arterial to capillary to capillary again and then the venule. So you're adding a second capillary uh, into your blood flow, which is different than the way you've done it. Uh, previously, when you trace blood flow, you went from arterial to capillary to venule. Now you're going from arterial to capillary to capillary to venule. Okay, and you'll see the importance of that um, later on. So again, your first, uh, the formation of filtrate is going to happen in the uh, glomerulus. And then these purple things, this is where you're going to have um, kind of the modification of the urine uh, movement back and forth between the filtrate and, and the blood. And we'll talk about how that happens as we move through these um, lectures. All right, so those are all the parts. That's a brief introduction of the kidney. So you have your kidney, your ureters, your bladder, and then your urethra, okay? So then in your kidney, the, uh, the part of the kidney that does the work is called a nephron. You're gonna learn about the nephron. You're gonna learn the different parts, the glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting ducts. You want to make sure you understand the difference between cortical nephrons and juxta juxtamedullary nephrons. All right, so that's enough for this video. I will start the next one. Thank you.